Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. Well, you guys seemed to like it when I went back and explored 144th scale last time, so here I am again, taking a look at Eduard's MiG-21 in the aforementioned Braille scale. Despite being a tiny kit, it definitely seems like it packs a punch, so let's not waste any more time and have a look at this diddy little part. Immediately, at first glance, I could tell that this kit was the best I've encountered in the scale. Not only is the amount of detail present extremely impressive, but those panel lines almost seem to be in scale despite how small the fuselage itself is. This is truly a testament to the moulding quality over at Eduard headquarters. The kit consists of only two dark grey plastic sprues, with one clear sprue, however this is to be expected as the part count isn't exactly high. All the parts look beautiful and crisp, with absolutely no flash that I could see, with very subtle and almost unnoticeable seam lines on most of the parts. This is absolutely beautiful stuff. The clear parts are pretty thick, mostly down to the limitations of injection moulding, however they are crystal clear and come with pre-cut masks as standard, so I'm looking forward to that. Now that was a pretty solid peel. Whilst these decals aren't cartograph, they look pretty good to me and the colours, for the most part, are nicely registered. The cover film is very prominent however, so you might want to use a dab of white spirit to remove that once they're set. Right, let's get straight into the build. Before getting started with the cockpit, I fixed the two halves of the spine together so they'd be ready to sand smooth when the time came later on. As for the cockpit itself, there weren't that many parts involved with its construction, however the parts that were used featured some absolutely beautiful detail, even featuring raised instrument panel dials. A pair of tweezers was absolutely essential at this stage. Despite the small size, the fit so far was excellent. When it came to painting the main interior shade, I made use of Ammo MiG acrylic, however in hindsight I'd probably have preferred using an AK or MRP alternative because this was really watery and difficult to spray evenly. The jet exhaust shade was then patched in using Mr. Super Metallic Iron 2. I didn't bother with a primer for either of these shades, purely down to how tiny the model was. With the cockpit green dry, the rest of the cockpit colours were added using a fine brush, along with heavily thinned Bioco acrylics. These consisted of a light grey colour for the seat cushions, along with black to highlight some of the controls. A nice touch included in this kit was a decal representing the pilot's seatbelt. This was fixed in place with a combination of micro set and sole, along with a fine brush and tweezers. Following a quick dab of Tamiya Brown panel liner, the cockpit could be fixed into place. No issues were encountered here. This was quickly followed by the joining of the two fuselage halves, again with a flawless fit. Before I assemble the rest of the airframe, however, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all of my Modeling Weekly channel members here on YouTube. Your support is absolutely invaluable and I can't thank you all enough. If you'd like to find out more about the different membership levels starting at $1.99 a month, feel free to click that join button down below for more info. Anyway, many thanks again and on with the build. The spine assembly from earlier could now be popped into place, making use of a handy locator pin towards the rear. This was closely followed by the wings, which are designed to make up a section of the underside as well, negating the need for seam line removal in these areas. The horizontal stabilizers were also super easy to fit, leaving no gaps whatsoever. I could now make use of those beautiful canopy masks that I mentioned earlier, 
which matched up beautifully with the canopy glass. The large gap that formed on the top was filled in with a dab of Bioco liquid mask, but liquid latex works fine as well. Well, that was a quick and intense building process. We'll slow it down a little for the painting and weathering stages. Before I could prime the model, the canopy was first sprayed with the interior shade I used earlier in order to give the impression it was painted from the inside as well. Then the entire model was primed with Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black, thinned heavily with Mr. Leveling Thinner in order to achieve a smooth and consistent surface. This process was carried out with a 0.4mm nozzle in order to aid with coverage. Next, it was time for a bit of pre-shading. For this purpose, I loaded some AKRC white into my Infinity and began mottling at very close proximity to the model's surface in order to achieve some finer details here and there. As with my previous 144th scale model, this stage was essential in making the aircraft appear bigger than it actually is, with all those fine twists and turns adding essential elements of visual interest to the camo scheme. Then, making use of Mr. Colour Russian Green, the nose cone along with all of the avionics panels were painted up prior to the camouflage. These were then covered up using the handy kit supplied masks, which eased up the process massively. Massive props to Eduard for including these by default. As the underside would feature a kind of blue azure style tone, Additional pre-shading was added in these areas using a dark blue Tamiya acrylic. This would help in adding variation to the underside in the form of discoloration on some of the panels. The underside shade was then blocked in soon after, making use of Mr. Colour C323 Light Blue. This was sprayed with reservation so as to not obscure the careful pre-shading that I'd carried out beforehand, with exception to the areas of green overspray, which had to receive a thicker coat. This was slightly short-sighted of me. Happy with the level of tonal variation, the underside was masked up ready for a coat of Tamiya light sand to be applied on the top side of the fuselage. Again, I made sure that this layer didn't fully obstruct the pre-shading underneath. Despite the pre-shading however, I still felt this layer to be a little bit boring, so it was time to spruce it up a bit. I started by adding some buff to the light sand, and using this new mixture to highlight some of the panels, I increased the paint job's overall interest and variation. It's already looking a lot better. The next stage in my plan was to mask off some of the panels completely, spraying them with Tamiya Dark Yellow. Introducing a new hue of yellow really helped to break up the surface, turning it into an aircraft made of separate panels rather than a monotonous lump with a single tone. Finally, I added even more buff to the original light sand tone and sprayed this shade through an AK mottling stencil. This further reinforced the depth of the paint scheme, introducing new textures and interest. With the lighter camera shade complete, I brought out the AK masking putty and prepared the surface for some Tamiya brown earth. As the pre-shading had already been covered up, I sprayed this shade as an opaque layer 
which would later rely on post shading to add interest. I completely forgot to film this, but the first thing I did was add some black to the earth shade and spray this along the panel lines in order to add some darker range to the surface. Then I once again introduced some AKRC buff and used this lighter tone to highlight the centres of the panels, imitating a pre-shaded effect. The final element of this three-tone camouflage was the Mr. Colour Bright Green. This seems very bright and contrasting at the moment, however I darkened it off camera with some Russian Dark Green in order to match it better to the rest of the paint job. it looks pretty good with the putty removed. The radome could now be popped in, ready for a gloss coat to prep for the decals. This isn't technically an essential step, however I like to add it just for peace of mind. With only 8 decals included with this scheme, the decal application process was very straightforward to say the least. I made use of the classic combo Micro Set and Sol, allowing the decals to conform into those lovely panel lines. As I mentioned in the intro, I also made use of some white spirit to remove the cover film in order to enhance the painted on effect. This was done once the decals had fully set however. A nice flat coat of GX114 from Mr. Colour helped to seal in all of those decals, ready for a spot of weathering. Weathering was kicked off as per usual with a hit of sepia oil wash along all of those panel lines and other surface features. A fine brush was used here in order to reduce the amount of cleanup required afterwards. This was kind of in vain however as the model was so tiny that the matte varnish pretty much pulled the wash across the surface anyway. In order to make this concoction I made use of white spirit and Abteilung 502 oils. I then left the wash to set for about 15 minutes before I hit it with a white spirit dampened brush to blend in all of that excess. This is a pretty therapeutic stage as it's really cool to watch the panel lines re-emerge from the surface as they're cleaned up one by one. I made sure to frequently clean my brush throughout this process as otherwise I'd just be spreading the excess around rather than removing it. Here's the model with the completed wash. It's crazy how much of a difference one simple technique can make to the model's appearance. Time for some additional weathering. Sepia oil paint straight from the tube was first applied along the edges of the main control surfaces, along with some other panels, and streaked backwards with a white spirit dampened brush. This created a nice grimy effect and helped to break up the surface even further.
Then some more highlights were added to the main camouflage by mixing up some light oil tones and dabbing them onto various small access hatches and raised areas of the model's surface. A soft blender brush was used to unify them with the surface, however a makeup brush works just fine. Finally, it was time for a bit of acrylic chipping. Some light tones that matched the camo colours were again mixed up, this time using Bioco model colour paints, and dotted around some of the forward areas that would get beaten up the most. The radome also received some chipping, however silver was used here as any dust or sand that hit the aircraft would make its first impact on this element, wearing it down faster than the rest of the airframe. The central drop tank, missiles and other fragile parts could now be added, ready for a final matte varnish layer across the whole model. In order to remove the canopy masks, I first lifted up the edge with a cocktail stick and then used a pair of tweezers along with my fingers to pry the rest up. Blue tack could also be used here to remove some of the excess liquid mask. The final touch was then added in the form of chrome landing lights, making use of my Molotov chrome marker. So here it is. The client who commissioned this build requested gear up, so a plastic shot glass plinth will have to do for this final presentation. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this tiny little build came out. It's often pretty difficult to try new things when you're working on such a small model, however I made sure to pack in as many little details as I could for this one, and I'm pretty happy with the result of that. There are a few areas where the chipping and weathering could probably be a little more refined, and in hindsight, those green and dark earth tones could probably have received a little more love. However, on the whole, I'm pretty content with my performance on this build. The kit itself was also a joy to build, so I had a lot of fun. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, so make sure to tell me what you think down there. That's pretty much it for me on this one, so I'd just like to say a final thank you to all of my Modeling Weekly channel members, along with all of you for watching this far. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you next time. Bye.